morning, everyone. A little empty this morning, but glad you all are here. And I, I greet you on returning from annual conference and a wonderful trip to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And uh, I'll be talking more about annual conference next week. There, there really isn't, aren't any surprises or anything like that, but I'll talk more about it next week. Do any of you have any announcements this morning? Anything? Nothing? Okay. Let's begin with the morning prelude. Please rise for our morning call to worship. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high that I cannot attain it. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Let's sing two verses of Lord of the Dance.
have us dancing quickly this morning. That's good. Let us pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son to save us. It was your plan and vision since the beginning of time. And we know that as your Son sits at your right hand, he will never die. He is Lord of our lives and Lord of the dance. We give you praise and honor for this. Bless our worship service today, this early summer morning. Come into our hearts and into our minds as we listen to your words and sing your music. Come and worship with us, Lord. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's sing together our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision. We're singing, Be Thou My Vision. No, that's all right. You're right. You're right. You were right. Okay. All right. Well, those aren't the words either. I wonder what happened here. Okay. Lord of the dance? No, 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 no. No, let's not sing Here I Am, Lord. Let's turn to your hymnals. Can you do that? Let's turn to your hymnals. I don't know what happened there. 451, 451, be thou my vision. And that's what you have too, right? Okay. All right. Be thou my vision. be seated. We come time to our, or down to our scripture time now, and we turn to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, a long reading really, chapter 3, 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 20. 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 20. It's called The Lord Calls Samuel. Or you could call it The Confusion of Eli and Samuel. So 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 20. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. However, one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of the God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. 
My son, Eli, said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. <laughs> and then realized, then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. And at that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or by offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you, Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. And then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. And the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. And he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And then if we go over to the gospel lesson, a little shorter reading, Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, verses 23 to chapter 3, verse 6. Mark chapter 2, 23 through 3, 6. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And he answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. And Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. And then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. And Jesus looked around at them in anger, and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. And then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Two very, very interesting readings. 
speak, for your servant is listening. In our scripture this morning in 1 Samuel, God kept calling Samuel. He thought priest Eli was calling him. That happened three times. And then Eli, Eli sent Samuel to bed and said, if it happens again, say, yes, Lord, I am listening. And yes, God did call Samuel again. And Samuel did say, speak, for your servant is listening. And then God told Samuel some shocking things about Eli's family. This is the priest's family. Eli's sons had blasphemed God. And Eli knew it, and he didn't stop it. And sacrifice would not atone for his son's sins. And after God had revealed his vision to Samuel, Eli forced Samuel to tell Eli the full vision. And Eli said, basically, let God's will be done, whatever is good in his eyes. Samuel grew up then after that, doing as God desired. He was a prophet for the Lord. And the Lord continued to appear to Samuel at Shiloh. And then just mentioning the, the gospel scripture, it's an interesting one because of the Sabbath. And maybe your mom and dad had rules about the Sabbath too. I know my parents did. And as I go home on Sundays, And I hear the lawnmowers racing. I get pretty judgmental. And I really shouldn't do that. It's just the way I was raised. You don't mow grass on Sunday. What else don't you do on Sunday? I'm asking you, what don't you do on Sunday? You don't work at all. You don't sew because the stitches will come out. What else is it? Anybody else? What? You don't, cook. you don't cook on Sunday. That's terrible. Anyway. Okay, you don't cook on Sunday. Well, the Pharisees were criticizing Jesus' disciples for picking grain on the Sabbath. Mercy's sake. And Jesus responded to them about David. In the ancient days of David. How he entered the house of God and ate the the consecrated bread, and gave some bread to his companions. And that's when Jesus made that statement, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Lord, God is the Lord of the Sabbath. And then we got to that story where Jesus went ahead. He, he knew they were watching him. And he healed the man with the shriveled hand on the Sabbath. And Jesus made a pretty good show of it because he told the man to stand up in front of everyone. And he healed the man's hand, the shriveled hand. And his shriveled hand was completely restored. And then they began to plot to kill Jesus. We are. Don't let anybody tell you different. We are to honor the Sabbath, and I hope you do. We are told that in the Ten Commandments, and Jesus modeled that in his life. There are other times where, you know, Jesus completely followed the Jewish law, the rules of the Sabbath. However, or but, he reminds us that we are and can do good on the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And I'll conclude that part by saying the Sabbath was made for rest. And that was purposeful by God. He knew that one out of seven we needed to rest. 
Now, the bottom line is this in the first lesson, the Old Testament lesson with Samuel. God was calling the young prophet Samuel, who was with the priest Eli. And Samuel's answer was, yes, Lord, I am listening. So here's my question to you on this second day of June. You did know that, right? You flipped your calendars, didn't you? Yes? On this second day of June, are you listening? Are you listening to what God says? Today at the other church, we have a person who is seriously listening to God's call. He has spoken here several times, and Michael and Debbie Bentz are being sent out of Park Avenue Church to the Trinity Charge. He's being sent out. He was at annual conference the other night, Friday night. He was licensed as a local pastor. And Michael and Debbie are receiving their first appointment in the Williamsport District. And yes, for Debbie, that's a long way. They will be serving Ulster United Methodist Church. Does anybody know where these places are? I said it's in the Williamsport District. Ulster is where the parsonage is. Monroton, yes, no, United Methodist Church. And New Albany, yes. No, Chris is shaking his head. No, I have no idea where these places are. Well, they're all northwest of Tawanda. Have you ever heard of Tawanda? Mike, you been there? Where did you guys hunt bear upstate? Tioga County. Tioga County, which would be Wellsboro area. Right. Well, this is a little bit southeast of Wellsboro. I'm just trying to give you a little geography lesson. But what I'm also trying to do is, could you do? Could you do what Michael and Debbie are doing? You see, God said to Samuel, and Samuel said, Yes, Lord, I am listening. Yes, Lord, I will follow your call. Can we do that? As we close today's message, a shorter message because it's Communion Sunday, I am challenging you and me, myself, to listen to when God is talking to you. Now, this is occurring daily. But we need to be hearing God's call. And in that, we need to take time to rest, and that's not necessarily just one day a week, to rest, to pause purposefully, intentionally, listening to God's voice. That does not mean that all of you have to become licensed local pastors or pastors' wives. Wouldn't that be awful? God might be calling you to lead an outreach program here at church, to teach Sunday school class, to lead or join a committee, to become a trustee or a finance committee member or, or social ministry, hospitality member here at St. John's or to lead a fundraising drive or a social need drive. God can call us in so many different ways and for many purposes. So I ask you in closing today, God called Samuel three times. How many times? How many times? I sound like my dad, all right? 
How many times has God called you? And will you be able to say, Yes, Lord, I am listening. Amen. Let's turn now to our hymn of response. Okay? Our hymn of response is open my eyes that I may see. Open my ears. That's another verse, isn't it? Please rise if you are able. We turn now to our joys and concerns time, and I ask that you just look over the list there, both the continued list. Bernita has her surgery next week. That's next week. 13th. I'm trying to figure out how many weeks that is, but anyway. Okay, week and a half. Um, the, okay, she has her surgery the 13th. Keep reading there. Hope continues to have some issues issues with her metastatic breast cancer, so please talk to her about that. Louise McLaughlin will have her hip surgery on June 17th. So if you could send her a card or a call, text. Pray for Ted with asthma. Y'all mentioned Don Helfrich last week. Oh my gosh. Shoot. Okay, so Don, we pray for Don's family then. All right. Ralph, you continue to get better? I'm in great shape. Great shape. That's good. Good. You look at the others there as I'm doing. Continue to lift up um, Mary Lou's niece and Mary Lou's niece and her husband continue to care for a new person that we'll put on this morning, Linda Grooms. 
you said they live in South Carolina, right? Okay. Who has cancer of the vocal cords. I've been asked to put Dick Gardenauer back on. You remember we prayed for him a while with his cancer. Well, his cancer is back, and Dick is now uh, under hospice care. Some of you know Dick Gardenauer. And then I just wanted to share with you the strangest thing happened this week. Um, you know, Bernita was our delegate to conference for the charge this year. She couldn't go because of her upcoming surgery. And Rod and Norma were going. And then Wednesday, no, Thursday morning at 510, and yes, I was up, okay, because we were getting on the road early. At 10 after 5, Rod texts me. And he said, Bruce, I had to take Norma to the hospital last night. Terrible pains in her side and back. And they were fooled around with blood tests and everything to check things out. Uh, Thursday and early Friday. And uh, then late Friday evening, Norma was to have her gallbladder removed. And then they postponed the surgery till Saturday. <laughs> I know, you're shaking your heads. Okay. And yesterday morning, Norma did have some surgery and uh, had her gallbladder removed. And she is feeling better. She came home last evening. And uh, we continue to, we have Norma on our prayer list now too to pray for her um, after this episode. So, um, yes, Joyce and I were pretty lonely at conference, but <laughs> Rod and I decided it just wasn't meant to be to have a delegate this year, a lay delegate this year. So, so we add Norma. Any others this morning? Come on. Go ahead, Susie. Okay, okay, that's fine. A couple that's near to your heart. And that's, a, that's fine to say it that way. Okay, anyone else? Paige. It's summer, okay, I had forgotten that. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Paige is excited. Okay, I don't know who sang it. Clint, maybe you can tell me. Who sang School's Out for the Summer? Oh, Who did? Alice. Alice I was going to say that, but I didn't want you to think I was listening to Alice Cooper music. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, School's Out for the Summer. So good job, Paige. That's exciting. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and Susie, Susie, it's a special year that School's Out for the Summer. You're retired. Yeah, you're done. You're done. You're gravitated, right? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for all of our blessings, for, for rest and reprieve. Whether it be some other break. We thank you for your scripture this morning that talked to us about rest and the Sabbath. Lord, we thank you for your other scripture in Samuel this morning that talked about listening as you call us. Help us to be purposeful and intentional and listen to your still small voice. Father, we give you our prayer list this morning. The lists that are on the printed page as well as those that have been added. We pray for the Helfrich family in Dawn's passing. And Lord, we lift up each name we've given you and spoken out in public, asking you to hear our prayers, hear our voices, 
Lord, we have concerns. We have issues that we're praying about. Sometimes, as Susie said there, we don't want to say names. But Lord, we want you to hear our prayers. So we lay each name today at your cross. At your cross where you knew pain. And you took our sins upon that cross. Adding to your pain, but also adding to your final victory. So Lord, and their family help them all and Lord for those prayers those people and concern that we have not mentioned please hear our quiet thoughts as well we pray all this in our Lord Jesus' name Amen God is faithful. Please know that. God is faithful. He hears our prayers and he provides for us. Please rise now as we th sing the doxology and thank God for all of his blessings. God, when you're praying with me, in all of your omniscience, we offer our gifts today. Just as you intimately know us, help us understand and trust in your vastness. As we reflect on our beliefs, may our stewardship reflect our trust in your guiding hand. Guide us to embody our creed living as a community of faith and love, service and action. Though your essence surpasses our comprehension, we find comfort in our relationship with you. As we declare our faith, may it ignite our actions, echoing your love and care for all creation. Bless these offerings as a symbol of our commitment to live out our beliefs. Amen. You may be seated. We come now to our communion time. And as I just alluded to there, you know, we, we pray for people and concerns each week. And sometimes you're just standing out there thinking, hey God, are you listening? And then we have to hearken back to, to Jesus in the garden. Or on the cross when he said, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Or in the garden when he talked about letting this cup pass from him. But then what did he conclude that with? Father, not my will, but thine be done. God is listening. and God is faithful. And then Jesus went on to Calvary. And that's what we celebrate this morning in Holy Communion. Let's begin our communion meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to God his Father. He broke it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to his father again and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. And do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, his mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim right now the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence, as we are all children of God, let us pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as we think about the cross, and as we think about the majesty of God and the miracles of God, remember that Jesus was looking down and somehow... In all of these mysteries, he was looking right at you and right at me and saying, I'm on this cross for you. Would the ushers please come forward?
was watching you all there as you were receiving the elements. And I watched Desmond grab one piece. And then he was deciding to go get another piece. But in the thoughts of children, that's what we need to be doing. Going after Jesus. Christ said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Jesus said, this is, my this is my blood shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Take. Can we pray? Yes, Lord, you were you were looking right at us when you were on that cross. You were bleeding, sweating, filled with pain, just for us. We thank you. We thank you for this communion meal. We thank you for your love for us. Help us to make that real in our lives. And help us again to listen to you as you call. Thank you for this blessing. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us close our service now with our closing hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Please rise if you are able.
It's 474. 474 in your hymnal. There it is. thank you for worshiping with us today. There probably were a dozen other things you could have been doing or staying in bed. But you got up to come here to your church home and we thank you for that. I remind you that St. John's Church is still St. John's Church. God-fearing, God-believing church. And we celebrate Jesus' love for us. Listen to God's call. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and all those that you love. May God give you and yours peace, his peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.